So, October half term of year 11, how are you feeling? Has it hit you yet or not? I know some of you are going to be really, really stressed because the pressure of year 11's hit you and then some of you are going to be really, really worried that the pressure hasn't hit you and you're not feeling stressed. Both of these situations are absolutely fine. Don't worry. There is so much stuff that we can do between now and April, which really isn't very long away. So what do we mean now? We've got November, December, January, February, March, April, May. Seven months until your exams. I know that has just freaked you out because you're kind of like, oh, exams, the next year, end of year 11, year 11, end of year. It's not seven months. There is lots and lots of stuff we can do between now and then to make your exam period relaxed, maybe enjoyable, um, and hopefully not super, super stressy. So, there are a few things we're going to talk about in this video. Um, we're going to talk about stuff that is on my website to help you. We're going to stuff about, talk about how you can look after your mental health. We're going to talk about stuff that you should be doing over the holidays. Um, stuff that you can do now to, to make you feel better in year, well, next year. April next year is when everything really kicks off and kind of like people get super stressy but there are lots and lots of things we can start doing now to make sure that doesn't happen so whether you started your year your GCSEs in year 9 or whether you started your GCSEs in year 10 that was a long time ago um for some of you it's going to feel longer than others even though it was the actual same amount of time some of you will have had a lot happen in your life since then and what happens in October of year 10 really really pales into insignificance compared to everything that's happened to you recently but when we do your exams there is not going to be a section on the exams where you can write I'm really sorry I missed this lesson because this happened so we need to make sure that everything that happened in year 10, maybe even everything that you studied in year 9, is still in your memory. So what you need to do is to find out everything that the examiners think that you know. Now I helped you with this for Maths, Science and Geography. You can download the free version guides over my website at everything the examiners think you know and you can start ticking things off. The first column is the one you need to be filling in because it's like four to seven months before the exams. Now some of the stuff you won't have been taught yet and that's absolutely fine, don't worry about that. But the beginning of the topics, stuff at the beginning of year nine, stuff at the beginning of year 10, go through and self-assess. Fill in the smiley faces. You can kind of look at the smiley faces if you want to. And then decide, do you know this? Do I need to go and click on the video and kind of like fill in that gap? Is there something that I can um, do to, to fix that? Now for maths, I'm in the process of editing basically the whole of the videos for the whole of the maths course. So there'll be 15 examples, you know, at all different levels and you can jump into this wherever you want to. For science, I've got loads and loads of videos ready and I'm just finishing off all of the practical videos. For geography, I promise I'll start making more videos soon. If it's a subject that I don't do, then your revision guides or the specification from the um, exam board. Specifications are very, very long, very, very teachery documents, but that is what your teachers use to teach you. The revision guides, if you've got them already, the contents page is a brilliant place to start. So you can just go through and tick off stuff that you've done and then highlight areas where you need to do a bit more. Now, if you identify five topics that you're not very good at or you're not very really sure about you can you wouldn't feel confident answering questions on in an exam then use this half term to try and fill in those gaps we don't want to get to kind of like april of year 11 and that five has turned into 15 topics that maybe you're not very sure about and you're trying to fix 15 topics in april while trying to revise um because what we really really want by the time we get to april is for you to understand everything and April just to be going over stuff, trying questions, can you apply it? So what we need to be doing now is taking the time to fill in the gaps to make sure that you understand everything, to go back over stuff and say, oh, I missed this lesson in year nine, never bother catching up the work, now I need to go and fill in that gap to catch up the work. Um, or kind of like, I had this lesson last week on a Friday and I had a massive argument with my friends at lunch and I didn't listen to anything that the teacher was saying because let's be honest, that happens all the time. Um, I need to go and like watch a video to catch up this work because 
we need to be doing it now it will feel much much better as opposed to trying to catch up loads and loads of work april um next year when when you've got a lot of other stuff to be doing now when i was mentioned at the beginning of the video i want you to have a relaxed exam period i bet a lot, a lot of you believe me but what i really really want for you is to go into the exam open up that exam paper and go oh hang on i recognize this question and not because you saw it on instagram the night before but because you've done so many so many so many so many practice questions you're kind of like this question feels a bit familiar because you know there there is only so many ways an examiner can ask where is a proton yeah, there's only so many ways you can reword that question um, so if you do lots and lots of practice papers, if you do lots and lots of practice questions, then what I want for you is that when you open up the exam paper, you're kind of like, this is weird, I've done all these questions before, and it won't be in exactly the same format, and they're always going to throw in weird things like carrots or oxalotls, oxal oxal I don't know how to pronounce that word, but we know there's going to be weird things thrown in there, but... For the majority of the content, I want you to recognise it, especially for maths, where they can't throw in carrots or oxalotls, oxalotls, I don't, that weird fish. Anyway, I want you to be relaxed because you've started your revision now, because you've started revising the right way, and that is by doing practice questions. Just reading and highlighting stuff is a massive waste of time, so don't do it like watch the whole topic videos and make notes from the videos it's got to be active you can't just watch the videos and sit there for two hours going oh yeah i know i know maths now you've got to be making notes from the videos and then trying the questions linked to the section of the videos and then doing other stuff filling in the gaps you've got to make sure your vision is active that you are doing stuff and you are doing stuff little and often so do like 20 minutes of maths and then like have a little break and then do kind of like you know 20 minutes of English and then have a little break and um mix things up a little bit uh, it's really really not going to be good for you just to sit there and do three hours of simultaneous equations because I love maths and I would hate to sit there for three hours and do three hours of simultaneous equations because that would be really really boring and mind numbing and um, so that's not going to be good for you so what have you got so far? Filling in the gaps and then revising in the right way. So being active in your revision. And then the last thing I want you to do is to prioritise looking after you. So looking after your mental health, making sure that when we get to April you are not super stressy and then when we get to August or when your exams are finished your brain doesn't melt down and cry. Now there are lots of things that we can do now to make sure that doesn't happen. In the exams there are going to be two types of questions. There are going to be the recall question which is just stuff you have to remember and write down and then there's going to be the working out question where you have to take stuff that you remember and do stuff with it like a calculation and or like a um, weird thing and then kind of like apply your knowledge. Now we can treat these separately. So the stuff, the questions that you just have to remember and the questions that we have to work stuff out for. For the questions you just have to remember, there's a really, really nice thing you can do which will just make them so, so easy. And that's learning the answers. Oh, I know, I know, you thought it was going to be much easier than that, didn't you? But if, for example, your units of physics or your equations of physics or your ions or your like vocab for French or Spanish or German, whatever it is, if you learn it, then it will go into your long-term memory. And your long-term memory and your working memory are going to be the different things we're going to use to answer these questions. So for the just the pure recall questions, we want them to be answered by the long-term memory. And it's kind of like, you know, if people ask you what your birthday is, most people don't have to think about it too much. They don't have to spend too much time working out how their birth, what their birthday is. Now, at my age, if people ask me how old I am, I actually have to work it out because I can't remember. But it's my birthday, I can remember. So a birth, like, what is your birthday? That's in my long-term memory, so I could answer that question quite easily. How old are you? I would have to use my working memory to actually work that out, and I'd have to put a little bit of effort into working out how old I am. I know. I know you guys all know how old you are, I don't because at my age it really, really doesn't matter. 
Um, so that's kind of an example of kind of like, you know, your working memory, uh, your long term memory, the questions are going to be in there, answers are going to be in there, buried away, and hopefully these questions will be quite easy to answer because you know the stuff. And the only way you're going to know the stuff is by doing lots and lots and lots of practice. Now I don't mean hours and hours and hours, I mean while you're waiting for the bus, doing some flashcards on your phone. Um, this could be your French vocab, or it could be your units, or it could be um, fractions, to decimal conversions for maths. The stuff that if you just know it, it makes your life easier, like uh, your times tables. If you know your times tables for maths, your life will be easier in the exam because, um, you know, if you know what a division is, you don't actually have to work it out. So you can just do it quickly um, as opposed to having to work it out. Somebody that knows their times tables will be able to answer a question using their long term memory. Whereas somebody who doesn't know their times tables might have to do a long multiplication or a long division using their working memory. And that's harder work using your working memory as opposed to your long term memory. So the more stuff we can get into your long term memory, the less work you will have to do in the exam. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'll do a proper video explaining all of it, but the more stuff you can remember, the easier the exam will be. And it is things like your timetables and your vocab. Um, and you know, there are loads and loads of people that have already made the cards on Quizlet, and you can just use those on your phone to, to revise. You know, you can say between stop number three and stop number four, I'm going to do maths flashcards. Between stop number four and stop number five, I'm going to do French flashcards. And that could literally just be five minutes a day. But that five minutes a day really, really could make a big difference in the exams. And then the second thing I want you to do to try and make your life easier is just get outside. I know, um, like exercise will really, really help you. Um, I go to the gym three times a week. I do not like getting up at 5.30 in the morning to go to the gym, to be back in time to get to school. That is not that is not a fun thing. But I always feel better on the days that I do it compared to the days that I don't do it. Now, maybe it's just a feeling of smugness that I can walk and go, oh yeah, I went to the gym this morning. Um, but you know, maybe just walk to school or you know, go for a run or to school. Adding in some exercise to your routine will make your life easier. Now, I'm not saying you have to do this past the exams, but for now it will make your life easier. The other thing you can do is just practice loads and loads of questions. And I've got loads and loads of questions um, for you on my website. Workbooks you can download, uh, multiple choice questions you can do online. Um, there is loads and loads of stuff ready and waiting for you. Um, so good luck guys, I know I've waffled on for a long, long time in this video, but hopefully it's useful advice that you can put easily in place over half term and will make everyone feel better um, by the time you get around to April. So guys, I'm gonna be here with you every single step of the way, I promise. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.